Welcome friends to Farm Fresh Designs 59. Today I'm participating in a playlist hosted by six kids in a glue gun and the co-hosts are Crafty Hits and Rustic and Lace DIY. Make sure to go down to the description box and watch all of the videos in the playlist with all of these amazing creators. My first project is a metal light switch plate. I found a whole bag of them thrifting and I was pretty excited. So I spray painted it white to prime it and now I'm using Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint to get a good base coat on it. The molds that I'm going to put on it are the IOD Village Market Mold and the Redesign with Prima Farmhouse Mold. Instead of using air dry clay today, because a couple of the pieces of the mold hang off on the side and it could possibly break eventually, then I use Amazing Castic Resin instead. The reason I like it is because once it sets up, it is extremely hard and it's not going to break. So, but when you mix it up, there's two bottles, bottle A and B, and you mix it up one to one ratio. So determine how much you need and bottle A, you'll pour in half of it, and bottle B, you'll pour in the second half. Now, when you pour in the bottle A, it's a clear liquid. But when you pour in that bottle B, there's a little silicone stir stick that I use. I found at Hobby Lobby. And once you pour in the bottle B, you need to be ready because it start, once you put it in that little container and you start stirring it, it's going to be kind of cloudy in the beginning, but very quickly it's going to become clear. And that's when you pour it into the mold. So just watch. Once I start stirring it, it looks a little cloudy. And then it becomes clear really quick. There you go. And so when you pour it into the molds, um, you don't want to rush and let it spill over. And you want to take your time. However, if you let it sit for just a little bit, then it will set up in that little stirring container and then you've just wasted it. So once you get used to using it, it comes out, it's a lot easier. Now you don't have to put cornstarch in the molds at all. Now when they first come out, they're just a little bit pliable, but once they set up, they're really rock solid hard. And so because this little banner is kind of thin at the edges, I use a toothpick because I was afraid that if I tried to pop out the edges and pulled it out, then it would stretch it a little bit. And so I'm using a toothpick to do that. Now on the cow head, what I actually did was I used some blue painter's tape to try to paint off, to tape off the part of the cow's body so that it wouldn't kind of spread into that part. That was a little difficult. I'm not going to lie to you. And I actually did a couple different little cow heads to, to, until I was happy with it. Now, when you first come out, if there's any little extra pour over, that's the time to cut it off. If you let it sit and wait for a little bit, you're going to need to use sandpaper to kind of sand it down. Now, when I attach it to the little light switch plate, I have already painted them white because they antique up better if you put that first paint on it. Even though it's white right now, it's just a good rule of thumb to go ahead and paint it. Now, when I attach it to the light switch plate, what I'm gonna be doing is using tight bond glue to put behind it, and then these are little clips I got at the Dollar Tree. And the tight bond glue does not move around on you, but I went on and used the clamps just to make sure that it's on there really good and I let it sit overnight. Now this is Voodoo Gel Stain Tobacco Road. And if you've never used it before, you're gonna really like it a lot. And so when you use it, um, you brush it on, and it looks like I'm brushing it on pretty thick. And then I go back with the baby wipe to wipe off however much I do not want. And yes, it seems like it's wasting a little bit, but when you brush it on, it's going to push into those little crevices that goes around the little border, and it comes out really pretty. When you put gel stain on, just do little sections of it. If you tried to do the whole light switch plate at one time, it would be really hard 
to wipe off the extra. So just do little sections at a time. Now, if you wipe off too much, you can just put some more on there. But I really like the way this turned out. And I have a vendor booth where I sell my items, but I'm thinking I'm going to have to keep this when I like it a lot. And then you just do little by little until you get all done. But it's really, it's really neat. And when people come into your house and see that light switch, they think it's pretty cool. Now, my next project is an old coffee pot. If you are as old as I am, then you're going to remember seeing these. And all I did was I put on this transfer that I found at Dollar Tree, and it came off really well. I was, I was really pleasantly surprised, but I did not put a clear coat on it because I was afraid that it would take the shine off the coffee pot. Now, if you're familiar with this kind of coffee pot, you're going to know what this part is. That's the inside of the coffee pot. And what you did was you would put that little base in it and see it's got that little spring on it. And then you would put your coffee grinds into that little cup and set it onto that base. And then you would put it on the stove and you would cook your coffee. Personally, I prefer my coffee maker than this because remember the grinds were kind of loose. And so, yeah, sometimes they got down into the bottom of the coffee. And sometimes if you put it on the stove too long, oh gracious, it was it just was not very good. It would almost taste burnt. And I glued those two pieces together with E6000 glue. And now what I'm doing is I'm using Dixie Belle Slick Stick to paint over it. Now, once I get it all painted, I will not be able to use it back in that coffee pot again, but that's okay. It's more for, you know, decor. And when I use this slick stick, it's just a good base for it so that once you do paint it, then it won't come off. And this is another part of that Dollar Tree transfer that I put on. And it just goes on so well. But it's one of those transfers. When you see it, you better get it because when you go back the next time, it's probably not going to be there. And then I did seal it. And I will be putting some antique... Um, gel on it. But this time, what I use is I use Waverly Antique Wax. It's something I used to use a lot, so I thought I would go back and use it on this. Now, this is just a little wood disc that I, I think I found that at Dollar Tree, and I'm using that as a base just to make it a little bit more secure. And I've already antiqued it, and then, I, but I use the Waverly antique wax. And you can tell the difference. If you'll look over at that little light switch plate, the way that the antique wax on Waverly comes out is a whole lot different than the Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain. And I think I like the Dixie Belle better. But you tell me, which one do you like better? Um, are you a fan of the Waverly? Or have you ever tried the Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain? And I'm just using tight bond glue to put around the base of that little metal part and then I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue to go ahead and secure it to that wood base in just a few little parts and remember you never want to put hot glue in the same spot that you used the liquid glue and then once I get it all secure then I'm just going to put some greenery in it and if you'll look over to the left of the screen, you'll see some real dainty white flowers. And those are my favorite flowers at Hobby Lobby because you can just put them in a glass jar and they're beautiful. And so I'm going to put some greenery in it and then I'm going to trim off those little flowers to make just a little flower arrangement. Now my next project is a metal tray. Now you kind of have to laugh a little bit because it says, now I'm awake. Well, I, I sort of have this reputation at my house where when I first get up in the morning, until I get that first sip of coffee, I really don't like to talk to people. And I have to admit, I'm a little spoiled. My husband gets up and makes my coffee for me. And I don't know what it is about that first sip of coffee that just kind of wakes me up. Now, this is an IOD stamp. And what I'm doing is I'm stepping it onto a napkin. And then I'm going to decoupage it onto that tray. Now, the reason I like to do that is if 
when you're taking the stamp off, if it wiggles a little bit, then it's smeared. And if you stamp it onto a napkin and decoupage it on and you mess up, then just pull out another napkin. But if you try to st stamp straight onto the piece, if you're very comfortable doing it, then go ahead. But sometimes I do mess up and then you have to paint it and start all over again. And I use the IOD letters for the stamp that says, Now I'm Awake. Which is kind of funny because that means I've already had my first sip of coffee. So I'm going to set this up on a little picture stand over there where I keep my coffee pot. Now I'm using the Waverly Antique Wax on this as well. And up there at the, is the light switch up there above it. And you can see the difference in how the two stains come out. And so I think I've actually already sealed this piece before I put the antique wax on it. Because you have to be careful sometimes with antique wax. If you don't put a clear coat on it before and you put that antique wax on it, it's a little bit harder to rub off. And so also because I decoupaged those napkins that I had stamped onto the metal tray, um, yes, there is a little bit of wrinkling up close. And so I was afraid that if I didn't put a clear sealer on it, then that antique wax would grab a hold of those little little wrinkles and it wouldn't look good. Now, I've also spray painted the back of it and put antique wax on the back of it because in case somebody does pick it up, I want the back of it to look as good as the front. But it's just a cute little sign. And remember, you got the dollar, I mean, you got the tray at the Dollar Tree. So it didn't cost very much to make it. And I like to use these little metal trays for just cute little signs around the house. And I don't put very much in it. Then that way, if I decide that I don't like it anymore, then I haven't invested a lot of money in it. And I just play with the antique wax on this several times just to kind of get it to the place that I like it. So tell me, are you somebody that needs that first sip of coffee in the mornings like I am? All right, now see if when you put those two pieces side by side, the antique wax and the voodoo gel stain, they do not come out the same. And I think I like the Dixie Belle voodoo gel stain more than I do the Waverly, which is kind of sad because I have a lot of that antique wax by Waverly. So I guess at some point I'm going to have to use it all up. Now, my last project is a piece of barn wood that came off my dad's barn when he passed away. And that moss came out of my mom's yard over there near the woods. And I put it in some water and soaked off the dirt. And then I glued it on to that piece of barn wood with tight bond glue. And then I'm going to make a little wall pocket out of it. Now, those no, this doesn't have anything to do with the coffee bar, but... It's farmhouse, and I think it's kind of cute, and I wanted to make sure I got it into this video. And this is just something I thrifted. It's something somebody crocheted. I really don't know what it was supposed to be for. So I cut off the part that I like to make into the wall pocket, and I do turn it down on the sides, and then I put it on with hot glue. Now, if you're somebody that crochets or knits, I apologize for cutting that up because I know it's a lot of work to do that. But this is something that I thrifted. So I'm just making like a little wall pocket. Once I lay it down, I realize I think I need to cut it some more. And I can, you can kind of see how much more you need to cut off. But I didn't have a lot of this barn wood left, so that's why the little piece of wood is not very not very big at all so it's going to be a small wall pocket well it'll, it'll be just a little shelf sitter and once i glue that little crocheted piece onto it then i'm also going to hot glue three buttons over to the side they're little antique buttons and if you watched my staging video recently you'll notice that when you style a vignette things look better in pieces of three or or odd numbers so that's why I use three buttons over to the side and it just adds a little bit of extra texture to it and then once again I use my favorite little wispy flowers from Dollar Tree I'm sorry from Hobby Lobby to stick into that wall pocket and this is a little 
it's just a little piece of crocheted lace that, once again, I found that at the thrift shop, and I glue that down to the bottom. I apologize you can't see it right now, but I glue that down to the bottom just to add a little bit of extra interest to it and just to add layers to it, and then it'll just be a little shelf sitter. But my daddy liked coffee, and this is barn wood off of his barn, so I guess if we wanted to think about it like that, they are technically related. Because when I think of the barn wood, I think of my daddy. And he loved coffee, just like I did. So friends, as we near the end of the video today, I would like to invite you to come to my channel and like my videos and subscribe to my channel. I've been putting up a lot of videos lately, and I'd love for you to stop by and see all the other pieces that I've done. And so here's just a little piece of the vignette showing you how they all work together. And then when you see these five pieces, I'm going to zoom up to two other wall pockets that I have done in the past. And one actually has a really thin piece of bark off of a tree. But these are some wall pockets that I've made in the past. But I really like my little coffee bar decor. And those coffee pots, I, I did thrift that, um, and it just brings back a lot of sweet memories. And there's my older wall pockets that I've made in the past. So make sure you go down to the playlist and watch all the other videos. Thanks so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe to my channel. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.